Let's go to suggestion number one. Who has the first suggestion from our studio audience, please? Yes, sir, what is your name? Scott Timberlake, Dave. Scott Timberlake. Where are you from, Scott? I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Nice to have you here, Scott. And what would your suggestion be? I'd like to have a better seat. <laughs> I understand you have connections around you would here. Like, where are you uh, presently seated, Scott? I'm over here to the left, and... Uh... You're not near that guy from Staten Island, are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Scott, I tell you what, I normally don't like to do this, but gosh, all the way from Tucson, and you seem like a nice enough fella. Let's see, find somebody really wimpy here that I can bounce. Um, it's pretty wimpy over here. No, how, about, how about right here? Is this all right? Come on, your history. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Have a seat. There you go, Scott. Have a seat. There you go. Come on. Right over here. Right. You can go over and watch Tom Brokaw do the news. Come on. Yeah, you get a facial blotter, don't you worry. I want some facial blotter. Yes, he'll get a facial blotter, don't you worry. Um, all right, who is next? Uh, who is next with a suggestion for better programming here at NBC? Yes, ma'am, what is your name? Hi, my name is Chris Shearer. Hi, Chris, how are you? Hi. Where are you from? I'm from New Canaan, Connecticut. Nice to see you. And, and what would you like me to do for you? I would like to see David Letterman, star of NBC's Late Night, wish my grandmother a happy birthday. She's 102 years young today. Right. I'm sorry, Christine. These things have got to be within reason. <laughs> next up there hello hi that's a lovely outfit you have on or dress or whatever you, you call it what do you call that an outfit an outfit <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is your name my name is Beth McTighe Beth nice to see you where are you from from Manhattan Manhattan right here at the Big Apple New York New York the yes. city is so nice they named it twice now <laughs> Uh, what would you like to see us do here Beth well I'd like to see an interview with um, Aunt, uh, Aileen Quinlan oops uh, Aileen Quinn, the star of the new movie musical, Annie. Oh, I see. Aileen, Aileen Quinn, the star of the new movie musical. Yes, sir, that's right. Yeah. I think that's an interview we can get. The other one would have been tough. Um, no, wait a minute. Hold it. A, we're joke. I'll close this down. All right, Beth, let me get this straight. You, what you would like to see here now is an interview with the star of the new movie musical, Annie, Aileen Quinn, the little girl who plays... I couldn't have said it better. There you go. Uh, it was very difficult. This woman, a uh, little girl, of course, is uh, very busy. The movie is a huge success, and you can't hardly open a newspaper or magazine without reading about it extensively. We are very lucky, very honored tonight to have with us the star of the new motion picture, Annie, Aileen Quinn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nice to see you. Um, how old are you? Ten. You're ten. And uh, do, do your friends at school treat you any differently now that you're a motion picture star? No, not really. I'm just an average ten years old, like they are. Yeah, yeah. And, and how did you get along with the other kids on the uh, movie set? Oh, they were very nice. Sometimes we have a fight on the set, but they were nice. There, so there were, there were some fights. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, your hair is lovely, uh, Amy. Uh, what, what do you want to do when you get older? Oh, I like to be demonstrating power tools at Sears. <laughs> do, um, do you have time for a song? I know you're on a very tight schedule. No, I have to go home to go to bed. Yeah. I have to get up to school tomorrow. School tomorrow. Well, here, Aileen, take one of these facial butters home for Mom and Dad. Thank you very much for being here. Aileen Quinn, ladies and gentlemen.
demonstrate power tools at Sears. Do we have, um, do we have time for one more audience suggestion, please? Uh, yes, sir, your name is? Saul Fromer. Yes, Saul, welcome to the program, and uh, where are you from, sir? Jericho, New York. And what would you like to see happen on network television? I'd like to hear a cut from the new You Downs album. Well, fortunately, I, uh, I have a copy of the latest <laughs> Hugh Downs album. This, of course, is entitled An Evening with Hugh Downs. <laughs> Let me just read you briefly about Hugh. It says here in the liner notes, On camera, Hugh is an accomplished salesman of floor wax, paint, underwear, headache remedies, or carpeting, also the host of ABC's 2020 off-camera. Hugh relates his enriching pastime to a serious quest for answers about man's role on Earth and his relationship to the universe. And I think that it's never more evident than it uh, is in this album right here. And what, what cut would you like to hear, sir? Cut to side one. Okay, that, that would be... <laughs> that would be to pass away the time. Ladies and gentlemen, now Hugh Downs singing to pass away the time. I met her in Venezuela With a basket on her head if she had met others, she did not say, but I knew she would do to pass away, to pass away the time in Venezuela. Hugh Downs, ladies and gentlemen, to pass away the time. Everyone who participated in that, of course, received the facial blotters. We're going to pause now. Jersey Kosinski will be joining us right after you take a look at this. But the thought of her smile, the thought of her smile. Thank you. Welcome back to the program. Uh, we have a fine show for you tonight. Uh, my first guest proved the last time that he was on this program. Uh, he is fascinating and often very bizarre uh, in the same way that his novels are. He is the author of such books as The Painted Bird, Steps, Being There, Blind Date, Passion Play. This is his newest one entitled Pinball. Please now welcome Mr. Jerzy Kaczynski. Thank you, Howard. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. You look, uh, you look great. You look fit. And, uh, thanks, thanks for not bumping me off. <laughs> now, this is, you might explain what that's in reference to. Last, last time I was supposed to be here and we ran out of time. That's right. And you did. You yeah. ran out of time. That's right. And uh, your friend uh, Paul Simon was here and things were... And he extended his time. That's right. Uh, no, that's what you get from friends. Uh, no, <laughs> there are no hard feelings here, I trust. No. Nope. Okay. I live 10 blocks away, so... Um, no problem. Right. You can right. come back anytime. Well, maybe some night we'll just do the show from your house. <laughs> Anytime. Now, now uh, I want to ask you a question here. In this introduction, which was written for me, uh, you're referred to as being bizarre, as in the same way that somebody, what you write about is bizarre. Do you consider that to be an accurate assessment of Well, yourself? I read your profile in Rolling Stone. I think you should be the last one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I think tonight we are even. <laughs> no, no, I was, uh, well, uh, let's go on to something else. All right. Um, <laughs> but uh, when you were here before, we just began to touch on part of your behavior that encompasses going out at night. And I said, well, where do you go? And you said, I'm not telling. Remember that? Where do you go? When you, when you go out at night. And you, you led me to believe that it was more than just going out to get a beer or, or two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you still, you do that every night. Right. What time do you go out? 12. Midnight. One. Midnight one or one. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you go? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, let me let me make a little uh, statement before. Okay. Um, I go to the places primarily where people meet each other. Now, um, after midnight, that's not a factory. It's not a garage. It's not an office building. It's a place where people meet each other rather informally to be together. Um, just in case, I grew up at the time when people who met to each other, met each other to kill each other, to arrest each other, Eastern Europe, Nazis, Stalinists. The only thing I'm really fascinated by, really, 
is to see places where people can be themselves, which means I go to the places, strange bars, swinging places, places where people dance without wearing anything. Anything to do with, I know, I know, well, I, listen, I, you, you, ask, <laughs> you ask for it. Um, I am absolutely fascinated by human proximity, by proximity which is not based on hostility, which is not based on bureaucracy, which is not based on, oh, derogatory ideology, anything that is authentic. Mm -hmm. To my generation, sex, that's what we are talking about. Um, in any case, you, you know it from my books. Sex was the only positive force in society. It's the only force responsible for life, for you, for me, for them. Every other societal force that I have seen was basically negative. Military, ideology, bureaucracy, state, these were forces that were responsible for destroying all of us. In fact, after you bumped me off, uh, after I was bumped off the last show, I decided to re rehearse, so to speak. So I went to one of these places and I ran into someone from Eastern Europe. Okay, let's, let's stop right there. You All went right. to one of these places. And I ran no, into, into someone one from Eastern what Europe. Places? What place? You, you've mentioned now sex and naked dancing and Lord knows whatever. That, that's the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's the place. Uh, now, what, you, what specifically, so everyone understands where you it, were. It's, it's a place of the kind I described in Pinball, Dead Heat, uh -huh. or the, the Dream Exchange in, 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 in Passion. Would Bay. this be a place that uh, a name others would recognize perhaps would be Plato's Retreat? Is it like, similar to an establishment like that? I don't, I don't recommend any particular place. I'm here as a novelist. <laughs> I go to all kinds of places uh -huh. and I synthesize them. Uh -huh. It's one of the places in which people are basically adults and they do what they want to do. Uh -huh. in, 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 in circumstances less formal than this one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now, um... and not everyone is dressed in white. Uh huh. Now you 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 show up. I show up and I look. I just walk around and I look. I keep watching. Remember being there? I like to watch. Right. I love to watch. I'm all over the place. Now don't don't people uh, say, oh look, there's world famous author and actor. Jersey Kozinski. Well, no, they are preoccupied with so many other things at the time that they, are, they do not, actually. This is the last thing they would want to, to pay attention to. Now, you only go there to watch. I go there to write. Uh, where do you keep your pencil? Uh, uh, awful, awful joke. Uh, now, but, now, okay, you go there to, well, we're going to pause for a commercial. We'll be back to find out more about this fascinating man. Hi, and hello. Welcome back. Uh, Jerzy Kozinski is with us, and uh, we moments ago established that you go to these places, these sex clubs, fair enough assessment? More or less, yes. And uh, so far you say you go there to observe and to, to write and research and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what about actual participation? Is this a... Now, let me, let me warn you about this. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind that all the sex clubs in this country are basically men's invention. It's our fantasy. It's the fantasy, it's a male fantasy in which you imagine a place in which you and I can go, and you, you will see all kinds of women, mm -hmm. tall and short, young and old, um, blonde and blue-eyed, uh, and dark and black, and Polish. Mm -hmm. um, um, and somehow you feel that you and I, devoid of all the attributes of external appearance, can do anything we want. Now that's the myth, and we are punished for it, and I tell you how we are punished for it, and that's why when I go there, I would rather have a pencil. <laughs> we are punished for it because when we go there, we are not the only men there. You and I are not the only ones. There are other men. The other men who are there are there for a reason. They walk with an extended pride. The pride... Um, look, I, 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 I know, I know. They walk, n they don't care. Now, you, you are supposed to wear a towel there if you want to. I would wear a towel all over myself. No, mm -hmm. they wear the towel over the extended pride. Um, it can be very depressing. Um, there are men who go there, and within 10 minutes, they are so impressed by all that they have at their disposal, that within, within minutes, they are all deflated, so to speak. Um, a man who is deflated, it's a very pathetic figure. He wears the towel all over the place. Mm -hmm. He watches paintings in a sex club. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the other men who are afraid to give in to the male fantasy. Now, these are the walking, saving accounts. They keep walking. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to touch anything because they're afraid of losing the prize. Mm. Which means that if you and I were to go there, we would have great difficulty figuring out what to do. Quite likely, you would ask me what my next novel is going to be all about, and we would sit down and make some yeah. notes. Now, this is not an easy place for a man. Now, how, how do the women seem to function? Oh, in this? women are free. Yeah. Women, are, women, are, are, women can see what it is that is wrong with us. Women, I think it's a very important place. And again, I speak as a novelist. It's a very important place for a woman to go to see how macho is destroyed, either by being what they want to be and disappearing very quickly, spent, so to speak, all the savings spent, or by being unable to part with what it is they make sure they the um uh, the matcha mm. so it's a it's a very education place are there a lot of people at one of these places 1200 600 in in one club tw you oh, get 1200 sure. people yeah 600 unhappy men walking around trying to figure out what to do and afraid to do anything wow. terrible place for a man yeah is it is it fun have you enjoyed for me it's an enormous fun yeah it's an enormous now, fun. Do, you, do you have to do you, do you have to take a, a female with you oh well yes um in fact last time when i went there i went with someone from eastern europe and she said to me well being an award generation she said i like to hug uh -huh. but there's nobody here i would want to hug hmm. and so i think it's the best place for those of us who like chauncey gardner and being there like to watch yeah. it's the best place yeah. just to go and watch uh, strange interesting and uh, we'll continue this we have to pause uh, nothing serious just station identification <laughs> then we'll be back jeff altman will also be here tonight <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the show. Mr. Jersey Kaczynski is here. Uh, also later tonight, Stupid Petrix and uh, comedian uh, Jeff Altman. Now, you mentioned that you were at one of these clubs with a, uh, a, a woman from Eastern Europe. Is that what you said? Uh, do, do, is there a, a great change or a great difference between uh, sexual activity or values or interest uh, between uh, Eastern Europe, Europe and... Europe and the United yeah. States. Enormous. Enormous. In fact, it's two different planets. I, I brought you some examples. I knew we were going to talk about it. Um, when I was writing Pinball, I kept cutting out clips from American newspapers, magazines. Here is an ad which appeared in all major magazines. Had a vasectomy? Question mark. <laughs> now encourage others. If you are already one of thousands of men who has had a vasectomy, join the National Vasectomy Club and inspire <laughs> others to follow your lead in bringing population growth under control. Wait. Your remittance of $6.95 entitles you to a sterling silver lapel pin or a tie tack membership card and bumper sticker <laughs> now, well, now i understand lapel pin but imagine dancing with someone and mm -hmm. she says well what is this and you mm -hmm. say vasectomy club <laughs> uh, vasectomy club but i mean no 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 wait 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 but a membership card whom do you show it to <laughs> now, imagine yourself driving on a highway and you are stopped by the highway patrol and they say, hey, buddy, 65, 75 miles per hour, this is 55 miles on. And you say, officer, <laughs> this is my membership card yeah, yeah. In, the, in the American Vasectomy Club. Yeah. I'm, I'm rushing to bring the population growth under control. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now, things like this are just not, this is, this is, this is Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. collective thinking. Uh, well, now, it's not a bad idea to, to observe population control uh, All right. theories, now, but the, li listen to this one. Listen little... to this one. Now, that's an ad throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Candy pants, 100% edible underwear. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can tell that I don't eat, eat that much. I'm basically rather slim. Candy pants, 100% edible underwear, come in three tastes. Butterscotch, cherry, and banana. <laughs> Uh, have you ever had one? I've never, never laid a... No, I've never uh, had any... Uh, 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 uh. Now, ne never laid an eye, never now, seen them, no. No, okay, now, they, they are male and female pants. Now, imagine yourself <laughs> being suddenly attracted to, to this particular kind of a menu, mm -hmm. candy pants. Mm -hmm. That's American. You can't find this in Europe. Now, how do you eat this? At which stage... I'm, well, all right, let's say that that you develop the sudden hunger. At which stage do you eat candy pants? Do you eat it alone? Do you eat it off someone? <laughs> now wait, 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 wait. If you eat it off someone, 
After all, that's what it says here. A candy pants at the Gwanda where at which stage do you start to nibble? When you're hungry? Hungry for what? These are the kind, these are, um, you should, in fact, you should tell me what to do with this. Oh, this no, is no, very I American. Think, no, I, uh, uh, imagine, imagine, let's say I, I would file a malpractice suitcase against the manufacturer of candy pants. Mm -hmm. How does he defend his business in court? <laughs> um, uh, poisoning, I mean, I developed a poisoning, yeah. I developed um, um, malnutrition <laughs> as a result of it. <laughs> uh, now, if, if, I were to t if I were to tell you that, if I were to tell you that the candy pants are made in this country and they are sold in all the novelty, indeed, novelty shops, and they are made in a certain town and the address is Prospect Heights, now, this sounds like something that I would invent. <laughs> now, could I possibly invent anything like no. this? No, so you wouldn't see this, in other words, in European well, What I'm basically saying is that there's a, freedom, there's a freedom here that you actually don't have in Europe. Yeah. Um, there's a sort of a marginal business in the United States, mm -hmm. the business of being free, which mm -hmm. eventually becomes central. Playboy and penthouse would be mar couldn't really exist in, in Europe, Western Europe, or, or certainly not Eastern Europe. Well, I think everybody has uh, the the, uh, the different, uh, the uh, the opposite feeling. Perhaps not in uh, Eastern European, uh, but they say that things are looser more in uh, France and uh, Italy and uh, those countries. Nothing, nothing of the kind. Yeah. I mean, it's just impossible that you could come up with something as bizarre and at the same time normal. I mean, you do buy these things all over the place. I mean, yeah. you can you can dance any way you want with the, with the vasectomy club. La Pelpen. In, <laughs> in Western Europe, I would be banned from every dance floor. <laughs> uh, this afternoon, I was reading an article, uh, a recent article published about you, and there was a little mention that caught my eye. I think it said this about you, that you keep a Buick. You have a Buick? Yeah. You keep a Buick loaded with weapons and food? No, I don't. I have a Buick, um, uh, old Buick, uh, with a hardly anything, just a few belongings that I need well, when I go around. The article made it sound like you <laughs> had this thing. Well, you had your article this week. You know how accurate these articles are. Well, but... The, uh, Is your article accurate? I mean... Um... Uh, I, haven't, I haven't read the article, so... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's... it's <laughs> All right, let me try it. The, the reason I brought this up, the reason that it made sense to me was I know uh, that you consider yourself to be uh, not a, a frightened person, but a, th a threatened person, don't you? Now, I brought something for you. <laughs> all my fiction and all my life has always been based on something that I learned at the age of 17. There was an American theologian, Paul Tillich, who wrote a brilliant book, The Protestant Era, in which he claims that all of us is, at any given time, a threatened creature. That the reason we are threatened, threatened is that we have all the freedom in a Western society to choose from. And yet, at any given moment, we are forced to say yes or no to it, mm -hmm. which means the true spirituality is the result of being threatened. Yes or no, whether it's a sex club or vasectomy, ad or this encounter, you have to respond by defining yourself in terms of yes or no. And so Paul Tillich, that's why I came to the United States from Eastern Europe. This was the country where actually I could legally say yes or no mm -hmm. to any kind of an encounter, so to any with, kind of situation. With the freedom of choice with also the freedom comes of choice this comes the continual threat. threat. Right. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Uh, will you do us a favor and come back again sometime, and we'll, we'll talk about your new membership in the Candy Pants Club or, or whatever. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jerzy Kozinski, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Stupid Pet Tricks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. And now it's time for one of my favorite segments on this program, Stupid Pet Tricks. And I believe every, everyone, particip everyone participating tonight, do they get the facial blotters? Oh, what a bonanza, huh? Uh, our first participant, Louise, Louise Amatrudo. Let's check the pronunciation. Louise, if you will, walk in, please, with your animal. 
You're, you're Louise? Emma Trudeau, is that close? And you're her sister, Linda. Right. Thank you very much. I guess we walked down a little closer to these marks. And this is your dog... Huey Emma Trudeau. Huey Emma Trudeau. Hello, Huey. Nice to see you. What kind of a dog have we here? Um, half sheep dog and half poodle. Half sheep dog, half poodle. And your trick, ladies, is... Or actually, the dog's trick. Um, <laughs> no, wait a minute. Do you do tricks? Hold it here. There's a facial blotter in it for you. Now, wait a minute. Um, I'm sorry you had to hear that, Huey. Uh, Huey is going to do... He's going to sort the socks out of the laundry. <laughs> Huey, <laughs> is, this comes in handy at home, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Huey will now sort socks. In, in what categories? Colors? No, uh... he just picks them out of the laundry. Okay, Huey the dog will now sort the socks, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, out of the laundry. This will be exciting and well worth a facial look. Come on, Huey, get Huey, those socks. Huey, where's the socks? Where's the socks? Well, you where's can't keep them away from those socks, can you? Socks. There's one. There's one. Come on, Huey. Huey, where's the socks? Huey, Huey, where's the socks? Sometimes these dogs are actually overtrained, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? They just yeah. say. Boy, Huey, very nice. Nicely done. Uh, we're going to take a look at all the excitement and drama of Huey sorting socks once again through the magic of slow motion instant replay. There he goes. I guess this is... There, that was the second sock. Unbelievable. Louise, thank you very much. Linda, thank you very much. Huey, thank you very much. Everybody tonight gets a facial blotter. Thank you. Goodbye. Whew. I could use one of those facial blotters now. Participants number two, Diane and Phil Senecola. I'm guessing at this name also we'll find out. Phil and Diane. How do you do? Did I get your, get your name right, Diane? Senecola. Sen Senecola. Senecola. Nice to meet you. And this is your dog? Vegas. Vegas, how do you do? Vegas, what a fine looking animal. What kind of a dog is this? It's a beagle mix. A beagle mix. Nearly sat on my shoe. Uh, <laughs> but then again, who hasn't? Uh, all right. What, what will Vegas do for us? She will eat bubbles. Vegas, the dog, will now... Hello, Vegas, nice to see you. I understand you'll be eating bubbles a little later. All right. Why don't you just sit down there? Uh, Come on, Vegas. All right, what, what uh, uh, obviously to music, is that what happens? Yes. To uh, Tiny Bubbles. To, to the song Tiny Bubbles. Vegas, come on. I've Vegas, seen Don Ho do this many a night. All right, Vegas. Ready? Here we go. Come okay, on, I'll Vegas. just stand over here if you need me. Come on, Vegas. Come on, get the ball. Tiny Bubbles. Come on, Vegas. bubbles okay. here again through the drama of slow motion instant video replay let's take a look at vegas eating a bubble <laughs> unbelievable ladies and gentlemen diane thank you very much thank you. bill thank you very much vegas thank you sir good night okay and our final participant for the evening i'm guessing that's good for a dog too huh um <laughs> Larry Lana Selly, and again, I'll have to check the name, and the cat, their cat, Larry's cat, Opie. Larry, how do you do? Did I get, get your last name right, Larry? I am Shelly. Lana, uh, Lana Shelly. I, I am Shelly. I am Shelly. I'm sorry, Larry, and this is your cat, Opie. Right. That's a sizable cat you got there, uh, Larry. And the, do the cat will do dog tricks. Right. Okay. What, what do you want me to do? I'll just stand over here and watch. Opie, this. come on, sit. Give me four. My, sit. my. Give me out a paw. Give me out a paw. Come on, shake. All right, give me another one. Well, all right. the crowd is gasping with delight here. Right. <laughs> Cats love to be turned around like that, don't they? Jump, come on, jump. Opie, jump, come on. Come on, Opie. Yeah. Whoa! Unbelievable! Very nice, Larry. Let's take another look at Opie. And Larry, for the magic of instant... Here it comes again. Oh, this will be great. Oh, my. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. And remember, everybody tonight gets those lovely facial blotters. We have to pause right now. We'll be back with comedian... <laughs> Thank you.
Paul. Welcome back to the show. My next guest is a comedian and a fine actor who looks deceptively normal. However, this man has stepped off the curb. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very funny gentleman, Mr. Jeff Altman. and narrow at the hip, and everybody knew they didn't give no lift to Big Jim. Hello, my name is John, and I'm here looking for some mining work. Is there anything available? Mm, how you folks doing? How are you tonight? Let me ask you folks a question. Uh, uh, you ever notice that when older people fall down, they always make a big deal about it? Hey, look out. <laughs> drop out of sight. You know, you, I noticed this because I've been watching my mom and dad get a little old. I, the dad's in his 70s now, and uh, God bless him, he's the only dad I got. And where's his pants like this? There's no body, just a belt and a head. You folks have cable television? Uh, this guy, I had cable for about, uh, I live out in California. I had it for about a week, I guess, and then all of a sudden just nothing at all. I guess, I guess you have to send them money periodically or something. Because <laughs> cat... I got to see one film in the week I had it. I saw that movie with uh, Marlon Brando and Martin Sheen about Vietnam called, uh, uh, yeah, Apocalypse Now, which I never understood, never had any idea what the hell they were talking about, because I didn't know what the word apocalypse meant, you see. <laughs> to me, apocalypse sounded like street talk down on Broadway, you know? Say, John, I saw you downtown, baby, kissing on that woman. You better watch that, man. You get apocalypse. <laughs> That's right, man. I think one of those dogs had apocalypse. <laughs> Religious shows, of course, now are very big, and uh, one of the biggest out of Akron, Ohio. I'm sure you've seen Ernest Angley. You know who Ernest Angley is? The guy that... Oh, he's my boy. Oh, yes, yes, I can turn back the hands of time. You better believe I can. And I can make a ship sail on dry land. Party hearty to the sounds of the mighty, mighty. Woo! Mama, take anything you need. Yes, give me your hands, give me your hearts. Let me grab a breast or two. <laughs> oh, yes. I love this. This guy's for my money. He does the real work. He's great. I believe him. I mean, he, people, he hits them on the head, sometimes kind of strong. But they go down, they get up in 15 minutes, they feel great. <laughs> the problem for my money is that the credibility... Some of the people he cures just ain't real good, you know, because he always asks them the same question. Oh, yes, what is your name and the town you're from? Uh, my name is Herb Buchanan. Yeah, I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'd met you in 1961, or Reverend Angley, when you cured me then of a brain blockage. And now my bowels haven't moved since 62, and... I'm a hurting cowboy. Oh, yes, Papa, take anything you Ooh, yes, fall down. Yes, do it. Ooh, yes, go on down. Boom! Guy goes down, gets up in 15 minutes, feels great. But you let somebody with a tad more credibility walk up there, and Ainsley gets a little nervous. Oh, yes, what is your name and the town you're from? Dan Rather, CBS News. <laughs> well, I guess the big story in the news is the fight coming up, the fight between Jerry Cooney and, of course, Larry Holmes. And uh, you got any picks? Who do you think's going to win? Tony, Holmes, Tony, Holmes, Tony, Tony. Great. Okay. I went to bed, though, a couple of nights. I think it's all a giant non sequitur, see, because I fell asleep a couple of nights ago, and I had a dream about a guy who's going to come along and just tap everybody's lights out. My name is Leonard Moon, and I don't have the brains of an ice cube. I'm ready for, for, for I'm ready for Larry Holmes, or even his brother, Mobile Holmes. How do I spell relief? I don't know. Many of you have recognized me from my film career. I played the meat in Rocky. I know I must whim the fight against Larry's home. Larry's home. Go back to my former job in the U.S. Navy as an anchor. I'm the greatest boxer of all time. My record now will be two, 
22, 3, and 15. Two wins, 22 losses, three draws, and 15 times I say the hell with it, say the Holiday Inn. <laughs> I love sports, and my, t my man with the Dodgers, Lanzo Melando, Bl uh, Vanilla Wafers, is good. Also, I love the Minnesota Twins, but I have never seen them both together. <laughs> I like ping pong, too, especially when I win and have to jump over the net. <laughs> yes, this I like. <laughs> and now, for the three things to have a maze, let it move. One, the hardening of jello. <laughs> Two, why is my left hand here? <laughs> and four, why is there always room for Jell-O? <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Last week they had taken me back to Los Angeles. <laughs> the doctors have taken me to Cedars of Simonized Hospital. I, I had worked there for two years as a cadaver. <laughs> so they knew me. They knew about me. Come see about me. Come see about me. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Yes, thank you, late, but good. <laughs> yes, then they put a computer on my brain, and they found out that Lemon, they said you have the exact IQ of Pi. <laughs> Alamo. <laughs> Finally, my main manager have said to me, Lemon, 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 Luke, Lemon. <laughs> Lemon, when you find Larry's home, and he knocks you off your feet, Stay down until 8. Stay down until 8. Now I looked up at the clock, it only said 7.30. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey. Hey. Yes, awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what are we going to do here? Oh, okay. What now, Herb, Herb Buchanan? Yeah. St. Petersburg? You did some extra work in deliverance. Let me, uh, let me, uh, <laughs> um, uh, these people may not know, but I'm sure they would be interested to know that you, uh, worked with Pink Lady. Yes. Pink Lady, and you were the... I tried to save the network, Dave. Yeah. What was that experience like? It, uh, it was, uh, very strange because, uh, Fred Silverman, of course, had the idea, which was great at the time, to, uh, build a show around two Japanese girls who were, were big stars in Japan, and uh, they, they left out one piece of the formula. These girls couldn't speak English. They didn't know where they were. <laughs> <laughs> They're now back in Japan going like that. What? Freddy Silverman? Shimodoa! <laughs> uh, we're going to uh, pause here. We'll be back with uh, Jeff Altman and Herb Buchanan. <laughs> Jeff Altman is here, and you quickly during the break you told me you had some pointers about going to the dentist. People want me to jot these down. Yeah, how many hate it? How many really yeah, hate, oh, hate it? Oh, boy. Well, you don't have to be the victim anymore. I've developed a three-pronged attack. Next time you're in that chair, whatever he puts in your mouth, swallow it. Okay. <laughs> when he removes the silly sucking thing from your mouth, continue making the same stupid noise. <laughs> <laughs> and periodically, just as a gag, pretend to lose consciousness. <laughs> Making those trips to the dentist much easier. Jeffrey, thank you very much for being here tonight. Also, my thanks to Mr. Jersey Kosinski, Bill Wendell, our announcer, Paul Schaefer in the band, ladies and gentlemen, the stupid pet participants, and uh, the studio audience. Thank you very much for being here. Tomorrow, join David with Mr. T and Ron Howard. Also, a visit to the Museum of the Heart to Believe and a tour of New York's donut shops. Have a good night. Thank you for being here.